everyone, welcome to MT Guitar and the Pink Floyd Friday. Today we're doing just a true gem, Fearless. This is the first song I've done off metal, which is surprising to me. I, I love this album. Really fascinating stuff with a couple uh, history facts about this song, as well as some music theory stuff. Um, and we're in an open tuning, so a great chance to look at how uh, music theory can be a little more simple when you're in an open tuning and you can see how these chords are working. Uh, it's a pretty easy song to play once you're in this tuning. Apparently, Roger claims that Sid Barrett showed him this tuning. It's an open G tuning, but it's a little different than what you'd expect, say, from like a Rolling Stones open G tuning or something like that. This is, uh, instead of the E going down to a D on the bass here, which is typical, it's going to go up to a G. All right, now, be very careful. Tune it very slowly up because that's a lot of tension on the bass and you know, if you do it really, really fast, you could break it. So you could even just say, you know, what the hell with it? I'm going to go down to D and that's also fine. It won't change the part. It changes the sound a teeny bit. So you've got E up to G. The A string goes down to G. So you've got two G's, unison. Make sure those are in tune because that can be a problem. D string stays the same. G string stays the same. B string stays the same. And finally, the E string goes down to D. G, G, D, G, B, D. As far as this song, it is a classic Gilmore Waters collaboration, which is uh, interesting to note with what's going on in the Pink Floyd news today, which we're not going to dive into. Um, but yeah, this was written for, for obviously for the metal album. And there is this Liverpool chant. All the fans were recorded actually at a Liverpool game. You can hear it at the beginning and the end especially at the end when it's a cappella, and they're singing You'll Never Walk Alone. This was a Rodgers and Hammerstein song that the Liverpool football fans would sing at every game. And speaking of uh, football, of course, I'm not talking about American football here. Gilmore and Waters were both, or probably still are, but at this time especially, were both huge football fans. And they always had a soccer ball uh, that they would carry around with them when they were traveling or whatever, you know, recording. And they even started a a football team called the First Eleven. All four members of the band were, were in it, and uh, a few of their road managers, etc. Fearless, to finally connect this with the song, was a term thrown around in the football circle, right? Uh, to be fearless, like, um, or, or it was synonymous with like, that's great kind of thing, like a very positive remark, fearless. So, that being said, really interesting little tidbit about the football history there. Um, now, as far as the song, when you have an open tuning, before we jump in and learn this, we just want to take a look at the fact that we can see the music theory horizontally without too many issues because the tuning is just open. So, when we go on this hook, what's happening is these are both G strings, so those are unison, so you could even do the, the riff on one string if you want, and it's basically the same notes, just not as full. And here we have the, the third note of the key of G. You can just count up from one to eight. All right, there's seven notes in a key. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twelfth fret repeats the octave. So this is the third note. Fourth, fifth, six, seven, one, or eight, however you want to think of it. And that, that's, and that you can see the distance between open G, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight. Kind of cool there. All right, that goes with the, for the chords too, when it goes, okay, what are those? Well, it's a C and B flat, but more importantly to the theory, it's, it's a four chord, okay? Four chord is five frets away, good to know. Flat three chord is part of the minor key, so a little bit of a modal mixture here, very common in, in rock, and that's going to be three frets away, minor third. Okay, notice it's one fret different from the beginning of the hook. That's because it's from the minor key, flat three. So kind of fun to see that uh, play out horizontally. When it goes to the end of the verse, or the pre-hook as I call it, goes to an A, which is the two chord, but major, which is not diatonic, up to the five. Five is always seven frets away. That's why you have these harmonics in the seventh fret. Speaking of harmonics, open tunings allow us a great opportunity to basically play harmonics very easily. That's why a lot of fingerstyle 
virtuosos, you know, will play in open tunings because they can just sort of whack a bunch of harmonics around everywhere and, and it's, you know, it's, it's really cool with percussion. So you also find it with songwriters, um, you know, and Bob Dylan uses open tunings, Rolling Stones, obviously. And in this case, Pink Floyd is. So you have these uh, harmonics that you can always play on the one chord on the 12th fret. You could even do the fifth fret, but they don't, they don't on the recording. So I, I wouldn't necessarily, um, there you go. So there'll be a full arrangement and tab of this on the Patreon and a really big thank you to all the patrons there. Next, we have the final song of the poll. Um, the final band of the poll, I should say for grateful dead and looking forward to that. That'll wrap up all the bands that we did on the poll. There'll be another poll coming. So Remember to check in to MT Guitar uh, and, and our videos and uh, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And let's go ahead and jump in and learn this. All right, so I may have forgotten to say that this is uh, very uh, beginner friendly. Once you're in the right tuning, it's, you know, it's quite easy. Um, of course, I'm throwing in the fills. You're welcome to just strum as one of the guitar parts is doing on the recording and skip the fills. That being said, uh, first things first, we want to get into the correct tuning. Um, Again, you're welcome to tune the E down to D if you don't want to risk tuning that E bass up to a G. Depends how heavy strings you have. I mean, I have 13s, which are quite heavy, so it worked all right for me. So it's probably fine. Um, tune that E up to a G or down to a D. Either way, it's, it won't change the part. A down to a G, D stays, G stays, B stays, E down to a D. And the tuning, you're going to have to tune it a couple times because that's a lot of changing tension. So we're kind of going to start from scratch here with just the basic string pattern. We'll add the fills in. We'll get to the, obviously, the hook. I have two ways of playing it that are both very similar and equally good, I think, in my opinion. And then we'll basically just start the verse and it will almost be done, believe it or not. It's, it's, it's not too much. All right. So you're going to just strum down. If you want to be super accurate, you could strum down all the way to the second string and stop there. And when I say strum, this is actually kind of a rake. So down, let's start with a pattern only. So we'll go down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, up. Disclaimer, Gilmore is constantly changing the pattern. That's what a good rhythm guitarist will do. So you want to start with a basic pattern and then make variations from there. So reiterating one more time here. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Okay, for example. I would change it up though as you go. Now we'll add the fills in because basically it's just strumming, right, for four bars. So there's other guitar parts in the recording going like this. have that all written out on the on the arrangement but let's go over that here note for note so it's strumming and then first fret second string and then pull off to open second fret third string pull off okay so that's one one oh two oh okay then o oh, two hammer on to fourth string back to o oh. Then back to strum, two, O, oh, third string. So to reiterate all that, down, one, one, O, oh, two, O, oh. O, oh, two, O, 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 two, O. Then a little two to four slide on the fifth and third string. Back down, and then open. Okay, so that's, now it's a, uh, like a uh, down bass down and then finally to get ready for the riff fourth string open a few times three times to be exact and then we start the riff so let's let's play that entire intro with the riffs you can just strum along if you're just doing the strumming ready three four here's the 
slide. Down, down, fourth string. Good. Now we start the riff. I call it the hook, basically. So two ways to do this. Let's start with probably the way that's recorded on the on the uh, on the album. So we're gonna go kind of a, a a down just to get ready for it. Down and then four four fifth and third strings. And you basically just strum. You can just strum the whole chord to be honest. And then you go up down on the open. So it's. But you kind of want to strum a little harder on the first down so that this melody is sort of ringing out. And it's going to be every three strums. So down, up, down, and then up on 5-5, five, five, and then down, up, open. And then 7-7, seven, seven, the pattern repeats. Down, up, down, 9, and 9, up, down, up, and then 11-11, eleven, eleven, and this time you just go down, down, 11 to 12. And then bass, down. Very important there, after you go 11, 12, bass, down. And then you kind of just keep strumming. So, let's do that riff nice and slow. Ready? Three, four, uh. If you really want to make that riff more pronounced, you can slightly mute the sixth string and fourth string. I wouldn't say that I'm really doing that, but I, I experimented with it and it does make the riff stand out a little more, but I kind of like all the strings ringing out. So that would sound more like this. And by the way, 12, slide it down. So I wouldn't do that for me, but I would just leave it all ringing out. Okay, so this happens four times, but the the first two times I did it like that. The third and fourth time I did this fun thing that I like to do, which is pull off. So it's like, and then it's, so you hit four and four, pull off, down. And then five and five, pull off, you know, and then up. So you're skipping the second strum of those three strums. Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, down is a strumming, but it's pulling off. They're both pulling off to open Gs. Kind of like that better, to be honest. Again. Okay, after the fourth time, we go to a C. Now, to save your finger strength here, I wouldn't try to bar all six strings because it's unnecessary, I would bar the fifth through second strings. And you're gonna go down, up, up, on the B flat here, which is three, 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 three. So it's like, so it's like, ba, ba, boom, down, up, up, uh, repeat, and then down, up, up. So that happens twice before the verse. So, C, B flat, again. C, B flat, fearless, and then we start the verse. Now you can hear the volume. One thing I forgot to mention in, in the introduction is the dynamics are just outstanding in this song. We go from kind of a driving hook to a real soft, um, you know, it's not a ballad, but a real soft vocal delivery from Gilmore, and, and the guitar parts kind of come down in volume. So dynamics means sort of a changing of loud to soft, etc. So I would bring the volume down, and I would do the same pattern as the intro. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. And it's just G. So it's going to be two bars of strumming and then C to B flat, call and response. Ready? Three, four. You said it was too steep to climb. Here we go. C to B flat again. Here we go. That's the main verse. And then last time, so that's three times. Here's the fourth time. Now the second half of the verse goes to A. 
Told you this was easy, right? Just two, 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 two. Use pick the place and I'll choose. Go up to seven, 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 seven for a D. Okay. Now we have what I consider to be like the end of the verse or the pre-hook, to be honest. And I'll fly. Uh, uh, so you could just open open G it, but I'm doing harmonics, which is what they did as well on most of the guitars. There's like four guitars on this recording. So 12 fret harmonics. The hill and my... Now, instead of going to here for a C, I recommend this. All right. Probably what they did as well. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think that's, that's probably what they did. There's no live version of this from Pink Floyd. So, 12, my hill, and then C, nice and gentle. Repeat that again. C, third time. So after three times, you go up to D, just take the C shape up, and if you, you know, you have the open G string, so it becomes a D add four, you could go here, but I like this sound, so I'm going to do it here. My, my channel, my arrangement, right? Uh, there's always other ways of doing things if, if your ear prefers this. But I'm going to do this, and then back down, back to G. Throw a little fill, and then it goes to the to the riff, all right. And then we only have one section to go. So let's take it from when the harmonics start, because we already did, you know, enough of, of this part, right? So we'll start with the harmonics, take it through here, and then that'll take us to, you know, the uh, the riff again. Okay, so three, four, and I'll climb the hill in my own way. Just repeat that. Down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, C. You can lift that ring finger on the C on the first ring if you want. Da -da. Here's the third time. This is when we go up. Take everything up, two frets. D add four, back down. Da -da. You said today. And we build up a momentum to go to the riff. Love the dynamics. It takes us nice, nice and up there with the energy. So the riff happens four more times. Then you have this instrumental interlude, and it's just two to two, sorry, two and two to four and four slide on the fourth and first string, with the third and second strings open. Creates a D6. Then slide it down. Creates a C major seven. Second time. Add the index finger if you want. Third time, you go back to G after three times. Okay. Now the third, now the the next verse happens, and then you're done. Um, you know the song just continues with all the sections we've learned, and then it basically ends with the riff fading out, and when we hear the uh, the Liverpool chant. So there you go. Um, Definitely, uh, you know, accessible for a beginner, and even the riffs are, are pretty easy, right? No solo in this, so totally a, a beautiful song, and hopefully that makes sense. Let me know, and uh, enjoy.